Okay, so now we've got the start of this uh, ribbon back spine working. We're going to go ahead and start renaming these controls and adding the controls in. So we're going to change this to BN DRV for driver joint back, and we can call this the head zero one. I'm going to copy the name, and again we don't need left or right for this because it's down the centre, and I'm going to paste this onto the second one. This is the head, we're going to say um, upper body. The next one is going to be the chest. And then the next one is going to be the tail start and the tail end. And because these joints are basically just skinned to this nerve surface, we don't really need to keep them in the actual exact same position as the joints under them. For instance, we, this joint here could be moved further up. But because these are, are quite in good positions to start off with, I don't really want to move these because they're already in good positions. But for your characters, you feel free to move them wherever you want. You can even put them in the middle of the two joints, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then also, for instance, down here, I could start adding more controls if I needed to. So, so like if the rotation of this tail sweeping round, if I couldn't get that correct pose, so, so like we can we can already see with free there, we can get this interesting curl round. But for instance, if I wanted to curl this even more, and if I wanted more controls in here, I could just add more driver joints and add them as influences to the skin cluster so it's limitless to how many controls you can add on this um, th that's one of the good things uh, again with the spline IK it's just a curve that's skin to joints so you could do the same with the spline IK if you've decided to use that as well okay so I'm just going to expand, expand the extra to hide and just copy the names over oh, so I've already done that actually I'm jumping the gun there um, so what I'm actually going to do is get these driver joints and get them in their correct joints joints driver so we can see that all consistent and we'll start making the controls for this character so in the past for the arms and these antennas we've used these cylinder curves but for the chests I don't really want to use the cylinders because it's a bit too much getting in the way having all those edges around so I'm just going to use the normal box curves so again the mail code should be in the des description or in the first video link um, but later on, earlier on even, we created these curves so I'm just going to rerun the code to create that curve and I'll just center the pivot on that and I'm just going to snap this to each one of those driver joints so you can see here that a lot of the rigging is just going to be repeating the same sort of methods that we've already done so once you start to learn these like we first went over this in the arms, so getting it, getting it to match the rotation of the arms, and then we can just use the same methods over and over again for the rest of the rig. So, all I'm going to do here is group each one individually. So control G, Control G, Control G, Control G, and I'm not going to group the last one. And actually, I'm going to unparent this one because I'm not going to group the this bottom one as well and actually this one as well because these because I know the head control I want that to be straight because that's where the start of the antennas start they were straight or pretty much straight along the side view so you can see this is modelled pretty much vertically down so I don't want the control to be 
sort of aimed towards here so it's twisting along there, I'm just going to keep this straight Uh, but for this control here, I've grouped this because I do want this to match the rotations. So here you can see that there's no sort of rotation splitting along there. So if we wanted to twist this, we'd have to rotate in all three axes, which is going to, you know, make the animator's job a lot harder. So to make his life easier, we're just going to get it so we can get that twist along there. But again, we're going to do that with the rotate offset group. But these two bottom controls again they don't really have any twisting the, this is just a flat tube but towards the bottom so we're just, just going to leave these pretty much this, the way they are so we don't need to group them we don't need that rotate offset group okay so to get that group again I'm going to select the group and I'm going to select these two groups and just set the pivots so I'll select the first group shift select the joint hit P to parent with the group still selected, I'm going to set the rotates to zero so we can match the rotations of that and then with the group still selected I'm just going to hit shift P to unparent same with this upper body control select the group, select the joint, P to parent reset the rotations shift P to unparent and there we go so it's all now matching up um, so what we could do here is start to rename these. So CC underscore head 01. And I'm just removing the back because we don't really need the back on each of these controls. I've got it on the joints, so it's more descriptive for the rigger. We know what we're, when we're going to be editing these. Because really the rigger's only going to see these when the animator's dealing with this character. All he would really wants to know is this is the head not the heat actually, it's the head so he'll know what control that is, he isn't bothered if it's working with the ribbon spine he isn't bothered if it's working with any other spine because he's not going to see that spine, that's going to be working in the background so this is where the naming convention for the control curves, we can keep a bit more simple so for the animator he can just see that, see it's the head that's all he needs to know, he doesn't need to know it works with, with a particular rigging system same with the upper body, CC underscore upper body. And then the chest, CC underscore um, chest. CC underscore tail start. And I'll just copy the name and paste that over to the tail end. Okay, and just before I move on from the interesting naming, I'm sure you've all had fun naming all these individual controls, but believe me, it'll be uh, worth it in the long run. I'm just going to call this the chest rotate offset. and this will be the upper body rotate offset ok so I've got them all named nice and clean ok so now they've all been named what we can now do is start to shape these again so I'm going to take this out of referenced scale this curve up Do the same for these. I'm going to unselect all these selection masks. Or we could actually just go show non, show nerves, oops, not nerves, surfaces, um, polygons so we can see the mesh, and nerves curves. And I'll just go and show node surfaces just so we can see the shell as well. And we'll just go ahead and start reshaping these. I'll just take soft select off. I'm 
is matching this general sort of area. And I'm avoiding putting anything in front of the mouth just so on the fly the animator can check the mouth out to see what's going on there. They don't have to see all this clutter in the way. And it's the same with these uh, cylinder curves. For the tubes here, they look like cylinders so we know it's going to be controlling some sort of tube shape which is the antenna. But and there's not a lot going on inside the antenna, it's just basically a tube and the same for the arms so it works for that but adding it for these the bulk of the body we might want to see more of the body so this is the reason I'm just using these cube curves just sort of letting the animator know I'm going to snap these to the grid, the X So hold the next again, snap to the grid. And then in the front view, I'm just going to go ahead again. Sort of get these matching the bulk of the character again so from all angles it's going to sort of represent that volume of that character it might seem tedious going through and it probably will be tedious but when you're animating it'll improve it so much that you can just look at these controls and see what it's going to control and just instantly grab it and start animating and the reason I put these so the so the um, CVs end at the bottom is so we can visually align that with the grid later on. So a lot of the animation for this this tail is just going to be keeping it on the ground. So if he's lifting and tapping his tail, we just want to be able to see when we've got it flat on the ground again. And we're actually going to change the pivots of these bottom controls so it does match the floor. Okay, so we've got that all set up. I'm um, just going to. go show all so we can see everything again and again with these um, we need to put the selection masks on so again with these driver joints we don't actually need them to be on the surface you could have a joint down here and you could still have influence on that surface so this is a case where you, it doesn't particularly have to always be on the surface so and what I'm actually going to do here is press insert and um, with to move the pivot point and just grid snap the pivots of these two to the bottom and this means wherever we move this control I can just hit zero and I know that the pivots going to be on the grid so this is similar with the controls if you have got a character with feet that are always going to be planted on the ground having the pivot on the ground and have it so you can reset it on the ground is going to save you a lot of time so I'm just going to select these controls and reuse transformations on and delete the history just to make sure it's all clean. Okay, so one last thing I'm going to do is if we've moved these pivots down, I don't really want the pivot to be affecting these joints because we want it to rotate from the position of the joint. So what I'm going to do is select these two joints or actually I'm just going to go to this nerve surface select the skin cluster name control C copy control V up here or we can go to click select by name so it's going to select the name and sometimes when you paste the name in it's going to select that skin cluster but if you hit delete you can see the cursor is still up 
in here so pressing delete thinks it needs to delete text up here so one way to get around this is we can just twist in the view part to deselect that element up there and then just hit delete because we've still got the skin, skin cluster selected and we can select the nub surface again and you can see these joints are still purple so we know that connection hasn't been broken and all I'm going to do is select these two curves go to show their local rotated axis I'm going to vert snap these controller, these driver joints down to their pivot points and one thing to note with this actually, what I'm going to do is get that pivot point right on the edge of there so if we rotate this it's going to be rotating on the bottom of his so right on the edge here where the tail meets the floor when we rotate this control it's going to be rotating along that as if that point of the tail is on keeping on the floor almost like you know the ball of your foot if you're doing a foot roll for your character if it was over here if we started rotating this it's going to rotate out in space there's going to be a gap okay so I'm just going to hide the local rotative axes then again those again going to reselect all the driver joints reselect the nub surface going to reskin it bind skin smooth bind go to the options because we've got the same settings as before and now what we can start to do is constrain these up so selecting the curve, select the joint, constraints, parent I'm going to the options and I'm just going to tick main 10 set offset and tick that on just hit apply and repeat it for all these controls So now, as we move this about, you can see how that's now moving, staying along. You can see how rotating from here means the spine is rotating from the base, so we're keeping it flat on the floor. So the animator can just select this, go, alright, I want it to be on the floor. And if he wants it to be on the floor, he can just add a zero in Y, and we know it's going to be level with the floor. So that's the reason we added that pivot to the floor instead of in the middle of this control. And because we had that rotate offset group, get that nice axis, the rotate Y, so that we can get a nice twist in his body. So we've got all that pretty much set up now. So I'm just gonna add the remaining curves and rotate offset groups to the Control objects group. I'm going to add the ribbon to extra to hide because we don't need to look at that anymore. And what I'm just going to do now is up here in the select by name. So if we click select by name, what I can do is a wild card, which is basically uh, the time sign to the star, which is above um, the 8, so shift 8 on your keyboard or if you've got a different continental keyboard or uh, US it's just the, the time sign and I'm just going to type in JT uh, JT capital B N underscore and another time sign and what that's going to do is it's going to check all the prefixes of all the objects and select anything that's got JT B N and if you remember in the past tutorials anything that we've wanted to bind with all the joints we want to bind with we, we've called JT B N so hitting enter we can see that's going to select all those joints. So this is where we're going to save a lot of time. So in the next tutorial, I'm just going to go through finishing off these controls, changing the colors of them, and then just testing the skinning of this character.